Hi, welcome. I'm Dana White, Noni. Hi, welcome. Not sure if it started yet, whatever. Um, I'm Dana White, Noni from slobcomesclean.com. And today we are talking about um, kitchens, decluttering your kitchen. Um, I am unfortunately a decluttering expert simply because I have to do it so much because I'm also a recluttering expert. Uh, so I have been through this process over the last four and a half years and that has included getting rid of huge amounts of stuff in my home and getting rid of a lot of stuff has made a huge difference um, as well as habits which we're going to talk about with the whole um, kitchen thing because they go really well together. But anyway, I'm excited. I'm not sure who's here. Um, I did set up the questions app, so um, you should be able to type in questions if you're watching uh, uh, within that Q&A little dilly up there, and I will be able to see those. And as best as I can, I will um, answer them during the time. If you would like to, uh, if you're in my Hangout group, which if you've ever RSVP'd uh, either yes or maybe to one of my hangouts, then I add you to my hangout group um, and I, you know, send out an invitation. So you can come into the actual hangout and be on video if you want to, which is great. But if you don't want to be on video, you don't have to and you can just watch it. I see Angela's here and I see someone else was with a really pretty face um, is actually in the room, but it's just your picture. So anyway. Um, but I'm excited. Oh, 10 viewers. Okay, good. We've got several people. So Charmaine is here as well. So we're going to talk about kitchens. Um, so last week we spoke about uh, kids' rooms, which kids' rooms are totally, completely overwhelming. Uh, we did work in my own kids' rooms this year, uh, this last Monday, and it was actually really fun. And I saw the benefits. I'm going to talk about this in my post coming up tomorrow, but I saw the benefits of having decluttered with my kids before. Um, if you looked at the room before we started, you would think this woman has never decluttered with her kids ever in her whole entire life, but I have. They're just, <laughs> you know, they hereditarily got the um, clutter gene. So anyway, they get crazy because uh, we're not good at keeping those up. But, um, but I saw the benefits of having decluttered with them before, having used the two decluttering questions. Um, they still kind of go, when I say, uh, if you were looking for this item, where would you look for it first? And But they're used to me asking that question. It's not a totally new thing. And they're able to figure that out. You know, And it's funny how I see that in children. I, I know in myself, I've had to develop this um, ability to, um, I've had to develop the habit of being able to answer that question quickly. It doesn't necessarily come easily at first. And that is, you know, the question is, where would you look for this first if you were looking for it? With my kids, they really want to problem solve. They want to think, what would be a good place to look for it? And I'm like, no, 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 let's don't do that. Just tell me where would you look for it first? Like, where would be the first place you would check if you needed this? And um, so it's kind of fun to see them learning those techniques and stuff that apply to all decluttering situations. Um, so that was fun to get to use all of um, you know my own techniques and also to see and encourage other people that it really does, it is something that builds and it becomes easier each time and you make more progress that lasts a little bit longer each time. So anyway, we're going to talk about kitchens today because even though my kids' rooms get crazy, <sighs> I feel like I've made huge progress in the kitchen over the last four and a half years. Um, yay, we've got more. Rhonda's here. Um, so uh, over the last four and a half years, I have made huge progress in my kitchen. A lot of it, honestly, is due to the fact that um, I have focused on it so much. Because let's just be honest, the kitchen is the heart of the home. And we all know that we hear that on House Hunters and, you know, decorating, store, but it's true. I mean, as a mom, you spend a lot of time in the kitchen cooking groceries, unloading groceries, all those types of things. So it really is, it needs to be a functional space. So that, that was my goal. When I started this whole process for myself and didn't know where to start, I just said, 
I know my kitchen makes me insane. If I ever get, you know, need to clean up my house, I first ha I always start with the kitchen because the kitchen I have to, um, you know, it, it would take me five hours to finish the kitchen because the kitchen was always a disaster. So I knew if I could just figure out how all these people in the world whose homes I go into seem to have a neat kitchen all the time, if I could figure out how I how to not have to spend five hours in my kitchen when I'm ready to clean my house, then maybe I could actually make progress in the rest of my home. So. I am a big believer that you've got to start in the kitchen because that is just the most consistently re-dirtied, you know, place that has to be used again every single day. Um, so it's just very important. So, okay, so we're going to talk about um, decluttering your kitchen specifically. Um, as I kind of went through my notes, which I'll be honest, I just ran into the house after my daughter's. Um, awards assembly. They do nine weeks awards assemblies. Anyway, so I was like, hey, sweetie, you did so great. Okay, bye. I gotta go. Um, and I felt a little guilty, don't worry. Um, but I, um, uh, as I was looking through my notes while they were doing the, you know, things that she wasn't getting an award for, um, I was thinking how so much of this is the same thing I talk about with every other space in the house. Like, it's some of the stuff we talked about last week with kids' rooms, it's the same concepts, but that's because they are basic decluttering concepts that just apply. And I personally need that. I need to not be like, okay, go do this, and I need to get the concepts down. I need to get the understanding down of how things work. And then the, the point of these hangouts and the point of the different posts that I've written on how to declutter certain different areas is to see how is that applied in the kitchen or in um, you know the living areas or whatever. So I hope that makes sense and I hope I don't sound redundant um, talking about some of the same stuff. But Linda mentions that um, how much the where would I look tip uh, has been a huge help and that you know that was just a light bulb and I said this before but where would I look instead of where should I look? Because where should I look is what I used to think, okay? And letting myself say where would I look and going on the instinct has been a really huge um, thing for me and it's been a big part of the process of accepting that it's really about how we operate in our home. It's not about how the experts say you need to do things and how you need to have your home arranged. It's Seriously, what do we do and how can we make our home function well for us? So, um, and then the container thing. Um, the container principle we're going to get to in just a minute. Um, how do you get to the floor? Okay, so Angela, we're going to get to some of these. I'm going to write down questions as I go because I will miss them. Um, floors. Writing that down. Okay, so I'll get back to it. But anyway, so let's go through real quick. Um, I have bad news. And that is that I believe when you go into your kitchen and say, this is the day I'm going to declutter my kitchen, that um, you first need to wash the dishes. And I know I'm a broken record when it comes to washing the dishes. And it's one of the things that I believe kind of separates out the people who go, oh, that's neat. Somebody who talks about cleaning but don't really need it. And the people like me who are like, oh, wash the dishes? Okay. You know, I mean, it's so obvious, but it was not obvious to me because I wanted to do the big stuff. I didn't want to do the mundane little stuff. But the truth is, um, you know, you can't, when, when you declutter your kids' rooms, you can't clean them first. I mean, decluttering is what you have to do before you clean them. But with the kitchen, it's just different. You have to do the dishes first because um, kind of like laundry, you know, what you think about it, what are the things that constantly get dirty? Dishes and laundry, okay? Kind of like laundry, you can't have a concept of how much you actually have versus the space you have to keep that in until it's all clean at one time. And when you're not consistently doing your dishes like I wasn't, you, you just, your brain, my brain could not grasp how much I had versus how much space I had and did I actually have enough space. It just, it just didn't, you know, because it was never all done at one time. I would do one load while there was still always another load or two worth in the sink, you know, so it just was so until I, you start doing the dishes, um, then you can, um, 
when, once you get the dishes done, then you're able to see because, okay, so let's say, I mean, I'm big on the habit and that's why, you know, the decluttering is great, but if you're going to just, where do I start? I recommend my 28 days to help for your home, which is starting with habits before you worry about decluttering. And when you do that, you're going to find that you have more time in your day to tackle decluttering projects. So decluttering is important and it helps the daily habits be so much easier, but you got to do the daily habits first. But if you're just going to go in and say, I'm going to do this, then you have to wash your dishes. Um, once I started washing my dishes consistently, then I had a true concept of how many I had, and I also saw how many I used consistently. Okay, so once they were all clean on a consistent basis, because I was running my dishwasher every single night and emptying it every morning and then refilling it during the day so that it, I could run it again the next night. Um, once I was doing that, then I saw that, oh, I always grab these same plates because they're our favorites. I didn't know what our favorites were before. We just used whatever was clean, okay? But once they were all clean and I could really truly choose, choose, did I just say choose? Sorry. Um, but once I could choose, once I had something to choose from, I always chose these certain ones. And that helped my brain kind of sift through what I was okay with decluttering because I thought, you know what, I never choose these plates because they're too heavy, um, they're kind of wonky, you know, they don't do well, um, you know, with certain kinds of whatever, whatever it was. But there are certain things that I never chose and I was able to see that where I never could see that before, okay? Um, so, but if you're just going in, you, you do the dishes and you see what will fit in your cabinets, which are containers. And that's the next, con next concept. Linda mentioned um, talking about containers and the whole container concept. This has been huge, huge, huge to me, okay? Um, accepting that containing means, and we talked about this last week, but containing means um, keeping things in, okay? It's not, how do I say this? I used to think that containers were for putting stuff in, but instead they're for containing things. It's like they're limits. They are natural limits that exist. Um, but when you think containers, you think going to the store and buying a bunch of pretty baskets and things like that, and that's going to solve your problems. But instead, I have accepted that I have built-in containers in my kitchen. And those built-in containers are my cabinets or, or my drawers. Where, okay, like for example, um, in, I don't remember what it was, maybe August, I think it was, I um, did a webisode where I um, put in glass glasses. You know, my kids are like 7, 10, and 12 now, and we're able to use actual glass glasses. So those of you who have little bitty kids, mm -hmm, yes, it does happen eventually. Um, but I had a set of glass glasses, and I wanted to use those, but I needed to take all of my um, other cups out before I had room for them. But before this container concept sunk into my brain, I would have thought, mm, I need to build a new cabinet. If I got a new set of glasses, then I need another cabinet because my one is already full. And I didn't understand that, okay, this this cabinet that I have, and I thankfully have decent sized cabinets. I don't have a huge kitchen by any means. But I have enough space for the glasses and the cups that we need as a family of five. So even for me who, you know, uses six a day. But anyway, so the container um, is the cabinet. And understanding that whatever that cabinet holds is how many I can keep. And that helps me, okay? So that meant that I then was willing and understood the whole one-for-one one concept, which was if I'm going to put these glass glasses in the cabinet, that means that I have to choose which ones I don't like and pull them out. Well, I had some really icky ones. I mean, we're talking like so nasty and gross and old. I mean, not dirty, but you know how glasses get. Anyway, but because I was thinking along those lines of, I really like these glass glasses, but I only have so much space, I only have so big of a container in this cabinet, then I was willing to switch those out, okay? And that goes into the one-for-one one concept, which, um, 
And here's the thing too, and I, I mean, when I was in college, I lived in an apartment that was an old home, and we seriously had one little cabinet that was like this big. I mean, I don't think our plates could even fit in there. Okay, so it's true. Sometimes you don't have enough space, and you do need to add, you know, a pot rack or something. And those are great times to go look on Pinterest for how to do that. I know my mom has um, a lake house, and I don't think she's watching, so I'm going to say this, um, which she knows anyway. But that woman can fit so much stuff into a lake house. It is un. Believable. Seriously, if there's an apocalypse or whatever, we're going there because there's everything you could possibly need. But one of the things she did is she got a, um, it's like this metal rack that she hung on a wall and she's got all her pots and pans on these little hooks and they're on that wall and that works great. You know, so there are solutions that you can find um, if you truly do need more space. But for me, space was not the issue. It was that I didn't have a stopping place for bringing more stuff into my house. I was like, you know what, if five forks are great, then 10 forks is better. And 15 forks is wonderful. You know, I mean, it was that whole just process. And part of that was because I didn't do my dishes. And if I wasn't doing my dishes, then I thought I needed more forks because I was always running out. But once I got that habit down, then I could see, okay, this is what I really need. Um, so let's see. I'm going to look and see if we have any. Um, yeah, Linda, Sear, Linda says, oh, Angela says, totally agree on the dishes. I do that too now. Every time I skip, I pay for it. It's true. I mean, when I say it's a habit, it does not mean that um, I just do it like as a robot. I do the you know, dishes and, oh, did I do the dishes? I didn't even notice because it's a habit. Yeah, it's not like that. It's more like, okay. I have to do the dishes because if I don't, everything is going to go crazy in my kitchen and it's going to go back to being total chaos. So I, you know, that's where the habit is, is understanding how all this works because I'm kind of an overthinker, um, understanding how it works and why it is that I have to keep those dishes done. Um, okay. Okay, Amy says she just threw away all her old unmatching glasses and bought new matching glasses and that helped. Um, I seriously, that's, you know, I mean, it, it can be a reward for yourself. If you are willing to get rid of stuff, um, and I know you can't always afford that. You know, for me, it was um, glasses that my mom got me for Christmas. You know, well, they sat in the pantry forever because I knew I was going to have to do a decluttering project to actually get them in there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of stuff will really encourage you to do that. Um, okay, and somebody else, Squail, I think. Um, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. It says it takes all day to do the dishes and it makes me so tired. I seriously know that feeling, but like in 28 Days to Hope for Your Home, um, you know, as you go through those different, through those days, it's amazing how the task that I used, I used to think doing dishes was an several hour task, was a several hour task, and it's not. It really, one day's worth of dishes is so much less than two days worth. I don't even know how because it doesn't seem mathematically like it makes sense, but it's like a tenth of two days worth of dishes, whatever. Like I said, I was a theater teacher. I don't do math, but um, okay. Let's see. Okay, so Angela mentions she's donating a toaster and a rice cooker that they don't use. Um, I totally think that's great. Except I am a huge fan of my rice cooker. Like I seriously love that thing, and I'm not trying to discourage you from doing that, but whatever. Um, but the thing is, um, that's kind of how I got started. Is it, this was even before the blog? But when I just realized, oh my goodness, I have so much stuff. You know, um, it was getting rid of the things that we got for our wedding that we had never used, and I think at that time it was maybe six years or something like that. But but really, it's that okay. This has never been used. I live just fine without it, and getting rid of it. But that goes with the one for one thing too. Um, you know, I've been married, I guess, 15 years almost, um, and a lot of the stuff that we got when we got married is starting to wear out. You know, I mean, we have thankfully we got some good stuff that's that's plenty um, works great, but um, we. Uh, 
you know, if some of it's wearing out, so we'll get a new skillet. And it's that reminding myself of that one for one concept where I am. Um, <laughs> somebody lost their feed. I'm so sorry. She says, Noni is uncharacteristically silent. Oops. Um, anyway, but uh, the one for one thing of just realizing and accepting, okay, this doesn't seem logical to me because I can think of all the reasons. Oh no, people are losing it. According to my thing, I'm still on, so I hope y'all can still see me. But um, so, uh, bleh, what was I talking about? Anybody remember what I was talking about? La. Um. Oh, okay. So I can think of all the reasons why I should keep that new, that old skillet after. Um, after that first, you know, once I get my new skillet, I think, oh, that's so pretty. And then I think, well, I can use the old one just in case this one, um, you know, is dirty when I need it uh, because that's what used to happen. And I also think, well, what if I need to make five different things? But the truth is once I was doing the dishes, again, all the time, then I was realizing, oh, I, use, I choose the same skillet all the time. And so it helps me do the one-for-one one thing of, okay, I really, truly only need one skillet. But it's also that, that thing... Um, you know, where people say if you have if laundry is too overwhelming, get rid of clothes. And it, it is. It's like um by having two skillets, then I'm gonna use both and I don't have to do the dishes. And so then I end up with more dishes to do anyway, and it's just this in endless long cycle. So um let's see. Long oh, losing my Train of thought. I'm going to go through and try to answer some of the questions or respond. Okay. Let's see. Several people have gone up, gone, are silent. I'm sorry because I'm still seeing me, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But okay. Um, donating things that you know you haven't used in a while, Angela. That's perfect. I mean, that's great. Um, okay. So a couple people have asked about habits specifically. Um, Sweeping and mopping, that kind of stuff. Um, somebody said, you know, what about after you get the the habit down of doing the dishes? And you know, there are some on my website on aslobcomesclean.com. If you go to categories and hangouts, you'll see um, some hangouts that we did last fall in September, uh, where I talk about the four habits that are in 28 Days to Hope for Your Home, or you can buy the book. Either one, but um, but really though that those habits specifically talk about the uh, or those hangouts talk about the the four habits. The first one being yes, getting doing the dishes down, and I in the book I take you through developing that habit over seven days. The next one is sweeping every day, which um, you know I won't go back over that, but I talk about in the habit and I I'm in the hangout and I talk about it in the the ebook. But how, again, all of these habits are so daunting in the beginning because you think, I can't sweep every day. That's crazy. But when you actually do it every day, it completely changes your view of what that is supposed to be um, and, and how, much, how long it's going to take. And as far as sweeping and as far as mopping the floor, um, that mopping is one of my weekly cleaning tasks. Not that I've done it in a couple of weeks. But... Um, I need to do a hangout on my weekly cleaning tasks or a podcast or something. But weekly cleaning tasks specifically are the big stuff. Bathrooms, um, dusting and vacuuming, uh, mopping, and laundry. Okay, so those are my four, you know, the big, big, huge things that you have to, you know, gear yourself up to do. Well, I have different days of the week that are assigned to those things. Um, and so, you know, like Monday is my laundry day, Tuesday is bathrooms, um, Wednesday I'm always out of the house, Thursday um, is mopping, and Friday is dusting and vacuuming. Those don't get done all the time. I mean, they don't get done every single week. I'm not one of those super ladies that does that. But by having a day assigned for each, for me personally, it helps my time passage awareness disorder that I have, um, which is a very real issue that I have. But, um, as I do, uh, because I have a day. Ashley's kids are here. Will you mind um, up on the top? You should have a little thing that says you can mute your microphone, and that would yeah, perfect. Okay. Anyway, um, 
but so I have by having a day assigned um, to each of those tasks, then I know, oh, it's Thursday. Oh, I need to mop. I may not think of it for two Thursdays, but it will come into my head just because the days of the week happen. And when they have an assigned task, then that's going to happen. Um, and knowing that, okay, I'm going to do that today so that I can rest easy knowing it's been done, even though, I mean, let's just be honest. What is the most guaranteed way to ensure that your kids are going to spill something all over the floor? Mop. And then it will happen. I mean, it really does, you know, but just by having that consistent um, day, knowing that this is mopping day, it just helps me mentally. And I have a post, I'll try to link to that in the show notes for this, um, where I talk about the, the weekly cleaning tasks. So, okay, um, here we go. Am I frozen to some of y'all still? I hope that you guys are... Um, uh, Oh, you know what? This is a really good point. Some, I hope you guys can see again now. Um, Rhonda says she often uses the question, where did I look after she's searched for something and then relocate it then? That's a great way to use that question. After you've had one of those extremely frustrating, where is such and such? Where did I put it? Um, then, you know, saying, okay, where was the place that um, I found it? You know, where was it that I looked first and then go take it then? That's a great idea. Um, Okay, here's another big one, and this is Christina says, um, I've noticed that if I do the dishes, I'm more apt to not have a bad attitude when it comes to making meals. This is so true. I mean, like, so crazy true. It really is, like, again, it's that whole, the kitchen really is kind of that, that wheel in your house that, you know, to be whatever, to use a, simile or something. What is, which one? I taught English, but I don't care anymore. Um, so, you know, it's that thing, you've got to keep it going or it just is going to rust and, and mess up, you know, but you have, yeah, once your kitchen is consistently clean, meal planning becomes more fun and cooking is so much easier, but then keeping that going. Um, but at the same time, fewer dishes Fewer pots and pans, stuff like that, mean that it's easier to keep it under control. I don't, I do understand it, but it is kind of like this magical thing that happens. But it really, it just seems like if I will have fewer pots and pans, then those stay cleaner all the time. And um, the kitchen stays cleaner. But, uh, and then going with the same basic concept, of just decluttering, not organizing, but just decluttering. Because if your kitchen is overwhelming to you, it's very, very likely that you just have too much stuff in there. Um, and separating organizing from decluttering, that's something I talk about all the time, is giving myself permission to not have to get my kitchen organized. That's not my point at this, you know, that's not my goal at this time. Because organizing it means that I have to pro solve problems and I have to solve them in a way that is going to stay solved for the rest of my entire life. Well, um, that's daunting, especially for the person who's, you know, seen my own history of things going back to chaos and being crazy again. So instead of worrying about solving problems, I say, I'm just going to get rid of stuff, just declutter things, get things out of um, my house that we don't use, you know, being honest and every time you just declutter, it's easier the next time you just declutter because even though you might have said, oh, I just can't get rid of this. Well, if you go back to it a year later and you just declutter again, you're like, oh, I had such a hard time getting rid of that last year. I kept it, but I haven't even used it. And all that emotional attachment is just not strong the way that it used to be. Okay. Um, no feed here. I hope people are getting this. Um, okay, containers, containers. I mean, really, for real. Accepting the containers that you have, and if you are going to add containers, start small. Start with a small extra shelf or a small something. But instead of saying, I'm going to completely, you know, buy a humongous big old shelving unit that's going to solve all my problems, instead say, what is the minimum that I can do? And then add to it if you need it. Um, <laughs> Linda says, thank you for being repetitive. I'm glad. And I, 
I do. It takes so long for some of these things to sink into my creative brain that does not naturally think this way. So, um, yeah, I'm glad that some other people need repetitiveness too. I am, let's see. Okay, the only containers, oh, I keep losing things. The only containers I use, somebody said, are for, um, okay. Oh, yeah, somebody mentioned the daily habit of doing dishes has helped so much. Um, the next habit is to put them away in the morning. And I'm telling you, putting them away in the morning makes doing your dishes so much easier because if you put them away, then you have a clear space to gather your dirty ones throughout the day and they're not just all over the house. And it just seems to have this great effect on your entire home. Um, you know, even if you if you don't have a dishwasher, just you know, getting all the clean dishes put away and then, you know, having that space to put your um, you know, inside the sink to put your dirty dishes in. Um, I missed one, somebody said. Oh, and after washing the dishes at night, uh Michelle washes, wipes down the counters in the stove, and that is, that's a mental thing. I mean, that really helps you feel like your kitchen's clean, even if not. Oh, another thing I want to mention, let's see, I lost somebody's um, thing that was really good that they said. The only, oh, here it is. The only containers I use in the kitchen are for storing food in the fridge or freezer. I have to go through them again because covers are missing or the container is missing and now falling out of the cabinets. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a tip that I totally made up on my own that has really been good. And um, okay, so sippy cups. Back when my kids were little bitty, um, I mean, sippy cups, I don't know if they're the same as they used to be because it's been a while, but, you know, it was the lid, and then it was the little stopper, the little white thing that went up in there, and then it was the cup. So it was three pieces for a sippy cup. Um, and as a mom, you know that when you need a sippy cup, you need it right now, okay? There's no waiting and, you know, okay, honey, let me go find all the pieces. Um, but when I uh, was dealing with sippy cups, I realized that if I would just take them out of the dishwasher and put them completely together, like the lid, the little stopper, and the thing, and just totally screw out so they were all the way assembled. No space for the stoppers and space for the lids and space for that. No, I was just going to go ahead and do that. Um, that it made my life so much easier. And I specifically remember my husband, um, he was um, helping to unload the dishwasher, and uh, he was not doing that. And I said, um, I said, haven't you noticed? I said, I really um, prefer if we, uh, you know, go ahead and assemble the um, sippy cups before we put them up. And he just kind of looked at me. Now, this is way before I started the blog. Okay, you have to remember that. He just kind of looked at me. And I was like, what? And he goes, when have you ever done something that organized or something like that? And it was just I know that kind of makes him sound like a jerk, but he's not. I promise. He's really funny. Um, but he was right. It was kind of like, huh? But I ap then applied the same concept to my Tupperware. Okay, all of my um, Tupperware, which is a trademarked name, but um, but for real, you know, a lot of it is Tupperware because I used to sell it a long time ago. Um, and, you know, but any of my plastic containers, I now have a lot of glass containers with lids and things. Um, instead of trying to figure out some great system of this is where the lids go and this is where the containers go and then every time you need them you're searching around for the matching ones and they always get separated. Instead, as soon as I take them out of the dishwasher, I go ahead and put the lid on the container. So I store them with the lids on. They're completely assembled as they're going to be. And that way I can just pull them out. Well, the concern with that for many people would be, me included before, would be that if I do that, I can't fit near as many into my cabinet. Well, it turns out I don't need near as many as I thought I did. And so having them in that stage where the lids are on the containers and they can't fit as many also keeps me from having more than I need. Okay? Another thing too, if it does it rarely falls out anymore because I have so many fewer. I need to kind of purge again because I ended up with some extras after um, the holidays. You know, people send them home with you. But um, I didn't just freeze. It was me that froze. Um, 
what was I talking about? Yeah. So I have um, so I have all of those in there. I have many fewer than I used to. And if by chance one of them falls out, the lid is already on it, and so I'm not totally grossed out by the lid hitting the floor, and then I have to rewash it again because I can't use it because that's how I roll. So anyway, um, let's see. Just to clarify, I'm trying to see if I see any other. Um, Oh, a rack. Okay, Angela mentions they have a rack for the bowls and saucer. They sit above the plates. I think that's great. And that is one organizing thing. Oh, I should get an Amazon link and put it in the show notes. But um, one thing that I do believe is a really great organizing tool is those things where um, it's like a little shelf that goes within your cabinet. If you have some space that's higher and you want to separate the bowls from the plates and use that. It's just a little metal shelf that goes like this and I think you can get them pretty much anywhere. Um, that goes like this and uh, it's it's open it's like you know it's not a solid shelf but anyway and that way it gives you kind of two shelves worth within one shelf. So those are great I think. Um, okay. Hmm, somebody says it's freezing up after every 30 seconds. I'm so sorry. Okay, although the person who said that can't see that, so I really am. Um, let's see. Oh, bringing beauty out of hiding. This I just kind of um, starred as I was at my daughter's awards assembly. I starred a few things, you know, like posts that I've written, um, and I just see the title here, but one of them is beauty, bringing beauty out of hiding, and um, one of the, you know, I don't like a lot of just, um, you know, stuff that doesn't get used in my house, but I do love my china cabinet. And in there, you know, I, when I was decluttering, I realized that um, a lot of my dishes that I got for my wedding, which I chose because I absolutely loved them, they like made my heart swell because I loved them, and we all know that we have stuff like that, but they were in boxes, and they were never going to get used, because first of all, I never thought about them because I didn't see them, um, and you know, if they were going to get used, it was going to be a huge, huge hassle to pull them all out of the box. So, you know, part of decluttering sometimes is giving something a place of honor. Um, you know, we talked... Um, I, I linked to a post on Facebook the other day about, you know, it's not clutter if I use it. I've had to kind of get that in my head of instead of when I find something that I go, oh, I do love this. I'm like, can I use it? You know, my baby's burp cloths. I use them when I'm cleaning. They're getting kind of nasty, but once they've been used, then for some strange reason, it's kind of like they've had the life they were meant to have. And then I'm so much more willing to get rid of them when it's time to declutter them. And so it's not quite such a traumatic thing as it used to be. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But um, same kind of thing with my china, you know, putting it in my china cabinet that we got for free. You know, somebody was moving and they just gave it to us, but I love it. Um, but, you know, putting things somewhere where they're up and they're they're used and they're, you know, or viewed or seen, or at least they're a decorative piece and whatever. Um, but using things is a huge huge deal that has helped me a lot. Um, okay, and pots and pans, um, again, uh, one of the things I want to encourage people with, if, if you have a dishwasher, I know not everybody does, but um, I put my pots and pans, I'm not going to give any kind of specifics because I know there are probably some of them that say that they shouldn't be put in the dishwasher, so you read your own directions and don't put them in there if you're not supposed to, but I do. Anyway, um, but I put my a lot of my pots and pans in the dishwasher, and I'm only able to do that because I keep the dishes done every day. Before, when I would wait and do the dishes every three or four days, there was never room for the big stuff, and so then the big stuff ended up um, sitting and soaking. You know, hold that old nice little. I've got to let it soak now. Well, I don't have to do that because I could just stick it in the dishwasher. Amazingly, it never needs to be soaked quite as badly when you're washing it right away instead of three days later. Um, but, uh, you know, getting, getting that process down, or even when I can't do that, only having one thing to hand wash because everything else is in the dishwasher, is it just kind of helps that, you know, helps it go. And again, I was able to see, 
oh, this is the best pot for pasta. This is the one that I like to use for pasta. I didn't really know that before because I would grab whatever was clean and sometimes I'd be like stuffing the spaghetti, you know, waiting for them to kind of, you know, go and then you get them you know, spaghetti noodles and get them down in there and it was you know not enough not big enough to really make what I need to be making and um, but it kind of helped me see which pots do I really need which pots do I need to keep um, and it made it easier for me to get rid of the ones that I, I didn't need um, and I think I mentioned this another time but I um, I had to give up two drawers and two kitchen cabinets no not two drawers just two kitchen cabinets. I had to get, give up two kitchen cabinets when I got my new stove and um, I would not have thought that was possible but um, I have decluttered so much and been perfectly fine. If y'all read my blog you know that I do cook every night. I mean it's a very very rare thing that we um, grab any kind of food on a weekday out. So you know I cook regularly and I have plenty of um, pots and pans even though I got rid of two full cabinets worth um, and another thing too I mean really it's hard to organize pots and pans I mean the the wall hangings and the you know above the whatever the ceiling hanging type things those are great I didn't really I don't really have a space for anything like that um, but just only having what we need makes them so much easier to get out of the cabinet they don't get crammed together it's not quite so bang, you know, bang, 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 bang as I'm trying to pull out the right thing. I don't have to pull out three things to find what I need. They're pretty easy to find and that's even with, you know, getting rid of two cabinets worth of space. Okay, let me see. Somebody says they are getting ready to remodel. They know it's perfect time. This is Rhonda. She knows it's the perfect time to declutter. She dreads making the decision about every little thing, so I'm looking for tips on how to survive through this and what I can get rid of. Um, you know, I do some math. I mean, just do math. You know, and as you're having to pack everything up, if you're not sure, do you know one box with the stuff that um, you're absolutely sure. Kind of like my daughter's like it and love it shelf. You know, this is my love it box. This is the stuff that I know I absolutely love. And this is the stuff that um, I am not completely sure about. And so when you open up the Love It box and you reload that in when the kitchen's done, then it'll be so much easier when you go, oh, well, you know, this is fine. Oh, I, I really don't, didn't miss these things. But, you know, if you have a little bit of time before the kitchen remodel, I'd start making sure you were doing the, the dishes every day. And I know that sounds so simple, but, you know, use this time as a I'm going to – do the dishes every single night until such and such date when I'm going to need to pack up the kitchen and I can pretty much guarantee you that your view of your dishes and how many you need and all that is going to be different if you've done the dishes every night for a week. I mean it's just it's this mind-boggling thing how that works. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Amy says, my problem seems to be all the rubber made, not finding the lids in the water bottles and plastic junk. Oh, and the small appliances that were grandma's and all the stuff that you use, but not regularly. Um, okay, so I kind of talked about that a little bit ago with the um, storing the stuff with the lids on. I, same thing with water bottles. Um, I store them with the lids on. Every, anything that has a lid, I pretty much just store it with the lid on because that is the only way that works for me. And it also limits how much I can have. Um, <clears throat> And then the small appliances, you know, that again goes to do I actually use this? And that's the one year test, you know, for me. Um, sometimes you may only have something that you use only at Christmas. So if you're in June and you're asking your, or if you're in July and you're asking yourself, have I used this in the last six months? You might say, no, I haven't. But you do really use it every Christmas, you know, having a, a place for that. Um, I started keeping my food processor on out on the counter. I know different people feel different ways about that kind of stuff, but I do because that helps me to actually make, um, you know, I like to make black bean dip, which I tell myself is really healthy, and hummus and stuff like that, and I'm so much more likely to do it if it's out there. Um, but part of that is getting rid of other stuff that doesn't need to be out there. Um, oh, okay, it's 1047, so I'm about to finish, but I did want to also mention that 
you know, I always give this example of, you know, starting with the visible stuff first. And the example I always give is my kitchen lunch making spot. And so I do want to mention that because I feel like those consistently cluttered areas happen so often in the kitchen because that's where you are all the time and you're doing things. Um, and when you get that decluttering itch to go ahead and declutter that spot that makes you crazy and over, over and over and over. For us, it's where I make lunches and it just ends up piled with the, you know, the boxes of lunch sacks and bags and, um, you know, snacks and all that kind of, you know, ha almost, almost finished bags of chips, things like that. But tackling that area first before you dig into the kitchen cabinets because when you do something visible, it encourages you to keep going and it improves your everyday life because um, now it's easier to make lunches in the lunch making spot. So that visibility rule is really key and will help you as you know you keep on going because it is such a process. Okay, I'm gonna see. Um, if I've missed any questions, does anybody who is on camera want to say anything? I see a smile, but I don't. Go ahead and unmute your microphone if you want to say something. Um, okay, Amy says that she has her kids empty the dishwasher and she reloads. I think that is excellent. It's such a great kid's job. It really is. Great one to put on the kids' chore charts if you have those. Um, I hate that Rhonda's thing frozen, froze up for her, but a um, few in small cabinets, containers. I think I've talked about all these. So I don't know. For some reason, it does not do the questions in order for me, so I'm not able to, like, just see what we've missed. missed. Um, okay. Okay, I think that I've covered all of the questions today. I do have to tell you, and I hope you're even still listening, but um, I am not going to be able to do a hangout next week. I plan to do every Thursday in January, but um, I have had something come up, so I am not able to do next week. But I will do um, the first Thursday in February, I believe, which is only two weeks from today. Can you believe that? I can't believe that. But anyway. Um, so I will do that, and that is going to be how to declutter um, clothing. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm going to talk about that. So hopefully I will have decluttered more clothing. I am working on that right now. That is my goal for the month is to get rid of clothing, and I am trying to be as ruthless as I can, but I haven't had as much focus time on it as I want to. But um, but that's what we're going to talk about is how to declutter clothing. I didn't say closets because, you know, my closet has a lot more than clothing in it. So I'm just going to specifically focus on clothing, which, like today, when we talked about the kitchen, we also talked about doing the dishes. So with clothing, we'll talk about the laundry, too. So anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much. Does anybody want to say anything? Did I not give you a chance? You can shake your head yes or no. All these no's, so I totally think that's great. But anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me again. I'm Noni or Dana. I kind of go have both personalities at once now, um, and I blog daily at aslobcomesclean.com. There's the little, you know, right there. You can see it. Um, and uh, so be watching for a podcast coming out hopefully today. We'll see if I can get that done. So uh, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in two weeks. Not next week, but in two weeks, and we'll talk about clothing. So bye.